Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the start of September, which means we have a brand new mission over on the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So it's my time to have a go and create an art journal page using this month's prompts. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I've created for the month of September. So this is the mission brief for September. As you can see, the three colours that we've got this month are mustard, peacock and slate, which obviously is a kind of grey colour. Um, the words that we've got for inspiration are feather, leaf, thyme, home and quilt. Now I'm kind of going to be using these two, um, feather and leaf, um, because the shapes are kind of similar. They're kind of overly kind of shapes. So I'm going to be kind of using that as inspiration for the basis for my art journal page for this month's mission. So the only thing I need to do really is to go through and um, follow through these eight prompts, as I usually do. But first of all, I'm just going to show you the colours that I've picked out um, for the mission for this month. Obviously, I've taken a sheet out of my mission inspiration journal already, so I can put that to one side out of the way and bring in the colours that I've got. So from my collection, I've brought in yellow ochre, from my Reeves paints. I've got Peacock from um, Dina Wakely Media. Now obviously the printed Peacock colour is different to the one that you see on screen, um, mainly because printed colours and screen colours obviously are completely different things um, and made up of different kind of pigments and light. So it looks darker when it's printed than it actually is. So I've got Peacock there um, but for the slate, I decided to bring in some metallic. So I've actually got silver, so a grey metallic. But, he says, I also had a look in my Distress Ink range and obviously pulled out peacock feathers, mustard seed and pumice stone. So we have three colours that will also go with this month's mission. So. You know, there are colours out there that you can use, and if you haven't got one that's, you know, identical, then just substitute something that you've got that's almost the same. So instead of using peacock, if you've got a teal, then use that, or a kingfisher blue. Use that instead. You know, they're not hard and fast rules, and you're not going to fail. As long as you're inspired to create something, that's the whole point of these mission inspirations every month. So, and it doesn't matter whether you just use the colours for your inspiration of one of the words, and even if you don't follow any of the steps at all, that's fine too. So just have a go. Just use something from that to get yourself creating and making some art. And as long as you just pick one element from all of the ones that are on these briefs, then that's good enough for me. So, okay, I'm going to make a start. I'll just pop that to one side. And the first step that we've got here is cover your page with paper fragments. So step number one. So I've gone through and pulled out um, a sheet of book text that was sent to me in Happy Mail some time ago. Um, and it's quite a large sheet. It's a eight and a half by 11. My art journal page for my Mission Inspiration journal is only eight inches by eight inches. So about... Um, about 20 centimetres by about 20 centimetres. So this is going to be big enough. Literally, if I just rip this, <laughs> it's going to fit perfectly right the way in the middle of the page. But it does say fragments, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to tear off... Excuse the noise from the background, that's my printer deciding to do its thing on its own. Because I've used it this morning already. It's now decided to go through a cleaning and that kind of stuff. So if you can hear the noises in the background, I do apologise. But you probably didn't over the sound of me tearing paper. So all I'm doing is just removing the borders first. So all I'm left with is just pure text. Which is almost as exciting to watch as watching paint dry. But this is a process video, so it's what and all. Okay, so I've got my sheet. So if I tear strips, I'm not 
been particularly exact. All I'm doing is just offsetting them. And I think that will do. So we've got four pieces. I may even just tear off just the edges. Just because I can. Just so we've got a little bit of fitting. I want a little bit of a border around the page. I don't want to see. Oh, one more in the middle. One more in the middle. Make it a little bit smaller just to fit. Just placing them on the page just to see where I think that they look best. So let's just swap those around a little bit because I don't want them to be able to actually read the page. That'll do. That will do for me. So I need to then get these glued down. So to do that I'm just going to bring out some matte medium. This is the Galleria matte medium which is quite runny. And I have a paintbrush. So now I know kind of where they're going to go we can start adding on our glue. I'm working on a, um, a kitchen mat. It's a, a food preparation mat, it's polypropylene, which means that it's going to be sort of heat resistant, but also it's going to be easy to wipe down if I get any mess on it, any paint or any glue. It'll be really easy to wipe down later on, rather than my grey mat, which doesn't. If I get paint on that grey mat it tends to stain, which I wish I knew before I bought it, but hey ho, we don't know these things do we until we try them. Now this book text that I'm using is actually from a book of music, so all the text here is actually about music. Top. And of course, if I get a little bit of buckling, if I get a little bit of bubbling, I'm not too bothered. Just adds to the texture on the page. But if you're one of those perfectionists that likes them totally, totally smooth, then just make sure that you paint the backs of your paper before you stick them down onto your page because that tends to get rid of any bubbles or creases or wrinkles if you like it totally totally smooth. I've just realised I haven't got a water pot so I'll have to do that in a moment. Okay so I need to get this nice and dry to get the end or to finish off step number one. So out comes the heat gun and I will see you again in a little while once this is dry and I've washed my brush. Okay so my page is dry, the glue's all set so we can move on to step number two. So for step number two it says cover with thin washes of two colours. Okay so I'm going to choose mustard and the slate or in this case my silver and I've just added a couple uh, or just a little blob of each of those two colours in this little palette that I've got here. Now this palette was sent to me recently in happy mail from my friend Bet Jacob over in Texas so thank you Beck for that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to those two blobs of paint and I'm just going to mix the water in a little bit and then I'm just going to add a little wash Starting with the, the mustard colour first, or the ochre colour first. So because
because this is a thin wash of colour, obviously it goes translucent, it's not completely opaque, so you can still see the words behind. I'm just keeping the brush strokes nice and light. Just give it that little bit of um, of translucence, so you can see the white through. Okay, and I'm not really going to bother cleaning the brush either, so I'm just going to grab the silver. So there will be metallic elements to this too. So what I'm actually doing is just transferring a little bit of that metallic, that kind of micery glow or glisten just into the background. Very subtle. That should do me. Okay, let's get that dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so my two washes of paint are dry and as you can see that silver has come through really nicely so it just gives that little hint in the background. We've still got the kind of grey colours when you're not looking at it directly on so you've got some darkness in there, it's added a nice bit of depth and texture to the background but when you do catch it in the light there is that lovely kind of glisten in the background. Okay so let's move on to step number three. So step number three is to add a focal image or two. Okay so I'm going to add on um, two different images but I'm going to add on two of one of them. So I'm going to end up with three different images. So the first one is going to be this um, piece of ephemera that I got from my friend Linda Simpson. Um, this is in a set um, I think there's eight, two different sizes um, of different birds on like music background paper, that kind of stuff. And I thought the colour of this one, this bird, was just perfect for it. So I think these are available on Linda's website. Either, I don't know whether she's got any of the physical ones um, already pre-printed or whether these are just available as digi downloads now. But uh, I'm going to be using this one. I'm also going to be using... Um, I've printed out a couple of digis from, again, my friend Gina Aarons. Um, these are available, I think these are available on our Etsy store. Um, Gina sent me these as part of a, a thing, a collaboration we did a while ago. Um, so I've still got them, obviously, and I'm going to use those as well. But what I want to do before I cut these out and add them to my page is add some colour to them. This has already got colour on, so that's fine. I'm, I'm going to be tearing this a little bit but I want to add some colour to these feathers. So that's where my distress inks come in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mustard seed. So I'm just going to load up my distress ink and then I'm going to run down the middle like so. Now I have printed these out using my um, Epson WF2630 printer so that means that the ink once dry is permanent or should be but I don't actually think it's fully dry yet which is why I'm getting a little bit of a smudge in the middle but I don't mind that. Bearing a man grey is part and parcel of the project today. So if we get a little bit of smudge it just adds that little bit of greyness to it. Perhaps I should have waited <laughs> until it was completely dry but you know. So I'm adding in that peacock feather just around the edges. Turn that round. Obviously where it's touching the green or uh, the yellow it's going to turn a little bit green but that's okay. Uh, 
and then catching the edges of both down the middle there. I will be cutting these out. I love this colour. Brilliant. Love those. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab um, either a scalpel or a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut these two feathers out. I'm also going to tear very, very carefully. Now let's see if we can try and get it so we've got the, fur, uh, the third out edge. That's it. On this side. So I'm going to try and tear around. So it gives us that nice torn edge there. So do that. Try and get it close-ish, but I still want a little bit of that background showing through. Like so. Perfect just what I want. Now I may go and tear just down and round here a little bit but we'll see how it fits on the page first. First job then is to get these two cut out so I'll be right back once I've done that. Okay so I have my feathers cut out. I've also carried on and just torn around the edge of there a little bit. Um, so now I want to just stick these two feathers down. And to do that I'm just going to stick them down using a glue stick. So this is the uh, Dilutions Diary glue stick. So I'll just move that to one side and then grab a little bit of that. I'll just run it. Again I'm not particularly bothered if the edges peel upon this. It just adds texture to the project. So I'm just going to lightly drop it down. I'm not going to push it down just yet. I'm going to grab the other one. Add some glue on there. That should do me. Love those little glue sticks. They're so versatile. So I'll just drop that feather there. So I think I've gone a little bit too low there, which is why I didn't want to push it down just yet. And then my bird, try and get that twist around a little. It's going to sit over here, so we just need to move that feather as well. Try and get it to cross over. I want the cross to show, that's it, just under about there. So I'm happy with the placement of that. So let's get that pushed down. And that's both the feathers stuck, like in that, and then we can glue a little birdie down. I love these little images. They can be used for so many things. Just try and get that. So it's kind of straightish. There we go. Just a little bit of a rub. And that is my focal images stuck down. Excellent stuff. Okay, so. We don't need to wait for anything to dry, which is a bit of a bonus. So we can move straight on to step number four. So step number four is to glue washi tape, tissue or paper strips. Okay, well washi tapes have already got glue on them, so that's probably a better idea. So I've pulled out a couple from my collection that have got birds already on. So that goes with the theme, which is perfect. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit just on the bottom down here. Now you see this is what happens when you're not careful about where the edges go. There we go. See, I should have left a little tab up. I will do on the next one. There we go. And then add some of that washi tape up the side. Just helps to hide those areas. Take a little bit more. And then just carry on that theme a little. And then just take it up there a tad. Okay, doesn't have to be. I've also got some book text washi tape as well. I'm just going to take a little bit and drop that right into the middle. Oh, and there's somebody at the door. Back in two secs. Okay, I'm back. So what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to take some smaller pieces and just add them up here. Now I don't want to cover up my feathers totally, but I just want to include obviously that um, pattern. So, oh dear me. The joys of puppy ownership. <laughs> I'll just go see to Mr. Bentley and I'll be right back again. Okay, I'm back. Full of interruptions today. So, I've had a couple of deliveries to deal with today. <laughs> but I'm also expecting um, someone to come and pick up a parcel as well. So, I'm hoping I can get this finished before we've got another interruption. So another little birdie down there will do. Just kind of pulls the design together if you've got a few design elements. A little bit of text up there as well. So let's just bring that across over there. Okay, I think I'm happy with that washi tape. So let's just deal with that so that when I come to use the washi tape again I can find the end easier. There we go. Brilliant. Okay, so that's step number four. So step number five is to add splats, drips or dribbles. Okay, so I don't want to go mad adding really really dark splatters uh, and drips or dribbles onto the page so I've got the perfect thing that I can use the pumice stone and maybe a little bit of that peacock feather. So I'll be right back once I've gone and grabbed it. Okay, this is it. So for step number five, add splats, drips or dribbles, I have a new stencil set. So this is drips and splats. This is available on my website now. Ta-da. Um, you all see, as well as getting the stencil, you also get the four cutout pieces to use as masks, if you so wish, or you can use those however you want to. So this is gonna be absolutely perfect just to add some nice subtle kind of splat and drips into the project without having that messiness of actually physically dripping. This is a little bit more controlled than actual dripping and splatting to your heart's content. So if you have a little bit of OCD, then this could be the little thing for you. So I want my peacock feathers. So now this is obviously a water-based one. Um, so it should go on here okay. So I'm just going to use this little splatter here. I'm just going to go around just add in that colour ha, 
Excellent. And then maybe just over the top there. Just kind of light circular motions. That should be enough, really, to transfer your colour, just to give you that hint that you want. Now I know I've just gone over there a little bit, but that's okay. And then just add a little bit more colour up there. Look at that. That's looking good. And then I can just do a smaller one down here as well. Swirl it off. Just like that. Cool. So because I've got a little bit of that matte medium on there, I am able to just remove it without leaving too much residue in the background. I like that. So there's still no grey in there, so what I might do next is just take the same stencil. Now I'm just going to give it a quick wipe off with a baby wipe, because it's water based. It should just wipe straight off, just to get rid of Is it clean from the outside in. That way you're not going to damage any of the edges. go just a quick clean and then we're ready to go again so what I'm going to do is grab a quick little cosmetic sponge I just need to give that a quick blast to get it dry so let's just do that and I'll be right back okay so let's just have a look at that little splatter there I just want to do one more but I want to use a little bit of that silver paint. Let's just get rid of that. Don't do a lot. So cosmetic sponge, just load up your silver paint. Now this silver paint from Reeves is a little bit translucent. It's not totally opaque so you will get it's shining through. There you go, can you see? So it doesn't matter where you put it. So even if I just added to another one down here at the bottom, you'd still get the shape and the shine through, but you also get to see what's underneath, which is a real cool way of incorporating the colour in without it being too heavy. And of course you can wait for it to dry, hold the stencil where it is and then go back in and add a second layer if you want to, but I don't want to. I just want it nice and subtle, I don't want it to be overpowering. Look. Just adds a nice kind of effect to it. So, did I throw that, that wipe away? I did, didn't I? Duh. This is battling with it. There we go. Nice clean chopping mat again. And then just quickly give that stencil a rub over. There we go. Clean as a whistle. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to step number six. Okay, so for my handwritten journaling off phrase, I'm going to do some writing up here. So I'm going to do it so that it's illegible and I'm going to use, or I'm going to write up there. 
um, some lyrics from a song um, all about um, birds and flying so I'm just going to do it so it's kind of illegible and I'm not bothered if it doesn't come out perfect because I only want to do it as kind of like a background image so Okay, so I've added some scribbly right in there. And I've used the Pigma Micron pen because it's um, archival, so it's permanent. If I'd have used a food ball pen or anything like that, the chances are that when I stick something over the top of it, it might come off and move. So I'm just gonna give that a quick blast just to get it dry. That should do me, so that we're dry enough. And then to carry on, I also want to add um, a phrase. So to do that I've pulled out my Tim Holt Ideology Big Chat stickers and I've got the words time to fly. Now I'm not just going to stick those straight down on the page because that's going to they'll disappear with that writing so what I've got is a piece of the edge that we used for the book text at the beginning so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick it down on that first, leaving gaps like so, and then I'm just going to tear in between and just trim it ever so, like that. Maybe just take the top off there. So just to add a little bit of a border all the way around. Just kind of frames the words a little bit. And then using that same Dilusions stick that we used earlier. Rub some on the back. And then we can add that onto our project. Or I'm going to add it onto my project. That was the royal we. The royal we. We are not amused. We are very amused, very entertained. Okay, so the last one. So you just try and get the letter in so that it's fairly straightish. <laughs> okay, so that was step number six. Just put the glue away. So ready to move on. To step number seven, doodle or scribble. Well hey, let's grab that pen again. So this time I'm going to add some doodles and scribbles just around the bottom and where that washi tape is. just to add a little bit of balance to that black over here. And then I think actually that's gonna do it. I'm not gonna do. He says, I'm not gonna do any more. And then goes ahead and does some more. Like that, I've done horizontal lines there and vertical lines there that kind of help bring that um, L-shaped kind of composition into a little bit more into the foreground. I just want to add a little bit here as well, just to bring it in. 
maybe just run a little bit down there. Yes, that looks better. Okay, so let's just make sure that's all dry before moving on to the final step. Okay, so step number eight is to create a border of your choice. So for me, keeping with that kind of feather and leafy kind of pattern or that theme that we had um, in the words, just to remind, feather leaf, I've got this uh, indigo blue stamp set called Aztec Borders and there's a strip here that's kind of got leafy feathery kind of patterns on it. So what I've done is I've added it to my um, stamp press, the tonic stamp press, so it just goes down the left hand side. Obviously I'm going to create a border to go all the way around, um, so this is going to be a bit awkward to do. He says, so I'll just move that out of the way and I'm going to use grey so I'm going to use watering can so that fits in with the colour scheme as well so I'm going to ink it up and because it's towards the edge this is why I've taken it off to ink it up because I'd have to turn it all the way around and then try and do it and it would be a bit awkward so I've just taken the actual um, mount block off first of all and then all I have to do is to drop it back on and then I can drop it down and give it that push and again I'm not particularly bothered about getting a perfect impression as long as you can see some a hint of that pattern on the art journal page like so so what I'll do now is I'll just take that off and then I'll do the same thing along the bottom. So drop that down. I'm lining up um, with the magnets. And I'll just push it down and then take it off again. Just take that out of the way. I know it's a bit cumbersome. But I find sometimes this is the best way to ink up particularly if you haven't got that much space to work in. And obviously I'm trying to keep everything within the confines of um, the frame of the video camera. Otherwise I would have just flipped it over and inked it up, but you wouldn't have been able to see it. So, and if I drop that back down now, it should be in exactly the same place because I haven't moved the stamp. That the previous one was. There you go. So if I take that and again I'll just move the magnets out slightly just to give me a bit of space and then I can drop that down on the edge, pick it up, that should give me the placement where it's going to go and once again I think I've just moved that no, I don't think I did. Ink it up. And then down. Move that magnet a little bit because it was just catching on the corner. There we go. And then the final one we can do, and I'm going to do it going the opposite way this time, I'm not going to make it go the same way. If I just move those magnets out of that corner, yeah, I think I'm going to have to take that magnet off altogether and lay it about there. That should do me. Yep, I can see where it's going to go. Ink up one final time and the watering can can get put away again. And then drop stamp down. Yeah, 
Et voilà. Et voilà. I need to clean it. Don't judge me. Tim Holtz never cleans any of his stamps. <coughs> okay, so I can put that stamp set to one side now. And the stamp press can go away. Thank you. Alright, so archival ink probably will need a few seconds. I did skid a little bit there, but do you know what? I'm not perfect. I hold my hands up. I'm happy with that, and I don't think I need to do anything else. Um, apart from maybe get it dry, and then I just need to sign and date it. So let me just quickly run through what we've done. Have we used the colours? Yes, we used the mustard. Yes, we used the peacock. And yes, we've used grey. In this case, we've also used mm -mm, shiny silver. But we also used that watering can grey for the border. So I think we're done. We've incorporated feathers into the project. And maybe leaf shapes too. Yes, we're covered with paper fragments. Yes, we added two washes of colour. Yes, we added a focal image or two. Yes, we stuck down washi tape. Yes, we added splats. Yes, we added and written journaling or phrase. Yes, did we doodle and scribble? We certainly did. And yes, we added a border of our choice. I would say then, once I've signed and dated, so I will sign here, and then we'll go September 18. I would say, pretty much, mission accomplished. Don't forget, if you want to join in with the monthly Mission Inspiration Challenges, all you have to do is to visit the Facebook group and the link is being shown on the screen right at this very moment. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.